Good afternoon, boys and girls. How are you doing? Isn't it a beautiful day? A beautiful, sunny California day. At least here. And if it's raining or snowing or something else where you are, have some sunshine in your heart, okay? So, um, if people look at you, they see sunshine. They see happiness. Alright? Try to keep it growing, growing sunshine in your heart. This is Teacher Zola from the School of Healing Martial Arts. And I will put a link down on how we can celebrate Tai Chi, World Tai Chi and Qigong Day, April 25th at 10 a.m. It's coming up, so it will be on Soma School of Healing Martial Arts. Um, it'll be on their Instagram, and it also will be on Zoom. And so check the link so that you can join, and we can all celebrate with everyone that's all over the world celebrating Tai Chi Day. Well, I just came from the park, and I had my mask on in the park, and there was a man getting out of his car coughing. And I was so glad I had my mask on, just to be on the safe side. And though I'm in my backyard, I want you to know and to feel comfortable to wear your mask. Because you want to stay safe, right? You want to stay safe. Got the hat on too because the sun is glaring down on me. And I need it so that it doesn't stare me in the eyes. Okay? Alright. So, while I'm putting my mask on, I'm putting a a piece of paper towel because sometimes I wet my lips and then the mask gets wet and if the mask gets wet that doesn't help it to stay as a protector it doesn't help protect me okay so you might want to use a little paper towel to put there all right so here we go today we're going to talk more about the stances and we're going to talk about fixing okay I want to say hi to Master Tom, to Dr. Dan Hoover, Dr. Jonathan Lynn, to Lisa Carpenter, to Margaret and Doug Robson, and to, who else? Oh, I know. To Lee and Orwan and Saul and Harvey and Maria and Tasha and Alfred and Steve and Evan. And all the people I love to play with in Tai Chi. Okay? So, we talked yesterday about the horse stance. Remember the horse stance? Riding a horse. Okay? So, both feet are pointed forward. Your toes are pointed forward. And you have weight, the same weight on both sides of your body. On both sides of the legs. Okay? So, there's not more weight on the right leg. Is not, not more weight on the left leg. It's the same weight evenly on both sides of your body, on your legs. Now, like the horse stance, there's an L stance. Like a big L, like for love, there's an L stance. And the L stance, instead of the feet being straight like this, riding a horse, the L stance the toes are pointed in opposite directions, sort of at a 90 degree angle. So here you are at the L stance. See? The L stance can turn into the bow stance, but we're not doing the bow stance right now. We just want to do the L stance with feet pointing this way. And it's a common move that's used in Tai Chi Chuan. Okay? Good stance. Good position. Right? And there's the stork stance or rooster stance. Some people like to say rooster stance because it, mean, it makes them remember that you're rooted in one leg. And the rooster stance is this one. Coming up. Right? Or the stork stance. Coming up. Alright, so 
I want you to remember, this is the horse stance. This is the rooster or stork stance. Okay. This is the L stance. Okay. And, okay, we'll do the bow stance. The bow stance, the L stance lets you be able to go in any direction. So, if I'm in the L stance, I can go like this real quick. If I'm in L stance, I can go like this real quick. Just running. While you're in the horse stance, it takes a minute to change your feet. So you want the you like the you can like the L stance because it helps you move and it also works on your balance. So with the different stances, you can try say with the rooster stance or stork stance, stork stance, you can come up and see how long you can maintain your balance. Okay? That's a good exercise. If you have difficulty, grab a chair. Okay, grab a chair or a bar stool or something that you can hold on to. And then just come up and stay as long as you can. And so with the motion, it's a breathing in and a breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And you want to tighten your muscles in your stomach. So, that's a stork or rooster stance. You hear, some people call it a rooster stance, some people call it a stork stance. Most important thing is to know what it means or what, it, what you do, okay? Now, I wanted to do some fixing, all right? So, we've been going over the 24 form. And there's certain moves that I want you to think about so that they help your body more. And one of the moves is brush knee twist step. So with brush knee step twist step, depends upon your instructor. Some instructors like you to go this way with the sweeping. And other instructors just want you to go across and in the middle. So one of the important things is with brush knee twist step, when you step out, you brush across the left hand, brushes across the left knee, and you go in the center. You don't want to make your arms all straight. Little bend, always a little bend. Not a, not a big elbow, but a little bend. They say like holding the baby. If you're holding a baby and the body was here and the head was here, the arms would be bent a little bit, right? Of course, most of us don't hold babies this way. But it's the idea that you keep your arms a little curved. So again, when we're doing brush knee twist step, you step out and it's a block and a press. Again, stepping out and your hand is here, a block and a press in the center, rest in the center, in the center of the chest, okay? So, let me say I'm gonna do it towards you. So, we go from white crane spreads its wings, white crane spreads its wings, foot goes out, you block left, and you come up and block right. Some people bring in their foot, some people don't. You step out, so when we don't, walk across the left and hit in the center. Shift back, adjusting your left foot. Both hands come up on the left. Stepping out with the right. Locking across and come in the center. Shift back. Both hands are now on the right. Step out, lock across and hit in the center, right in the center. Not over there, not over there, right in the center. All right, so let me do it away from you a couple of times. So again, white crane spreads wings. You block left, you block right. Make sure the right hand is up, the left hand is down. 
because we're stepping out with the left foot, right? Left foot goes down, left hand goes across, and hit in the center. Shift back, both hands are on the left. Now the left hand is up, the right palm is down, so we step out right, go across, right leg, and hit in the center. Shift back, one more time, step out, and you notice there's a turning of the waist. So turn your waist and hit in the center. And one of the things that sometimes when people are just beginning, they don't pay attention to the leg behind. Okay, so when you step out, the leg behind, the knee may be this way, but you're going in this direction, so you want to adjust the back leg. You want to swing the ball of your foot on the back leg. So say, with brush knee to a step, I step out, I brush across, and I adjust the back leg. See that? Come back up again. I step out, and as I go across, I adjust the back leg. Swing out like that. Let me do it this way. Let's say, go forward, back, I step out, adjust the back leg. Back, forward, step out, adjust the back leg. Shift back, forward, step out, adjust the back leg. See? That way, you don't want to hurt your knees. And also, when you're doing Tai Chi, you do not, you do not, you do not want to put your knee over your toes. Okay? You don't want to do a big extension. That will hurt your knee and hurt your leg. So you don't want to do that. You want to be careful. There's so much to remember, so much to think about when you're doing Tai Chi. And it, you should never hurt yourself if you're paying attention to your body. And we've talked about paying attention to your body. Because when you exercise, you want to improve your body and you want to improve your head, your mind. And that requires a bit of thinking, but you are quite capable of it because you're big and you're strong and you want to do things. And if you want to do, you should try, try, try until you succeed. Never give up, never surrender, okay? So one of the things I wanted us also to do today, to talk, besides the remembering about the horse stance and the rooster or stork stance, rooster or stork, rooster or stork, remember breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, and with the stork stance, you'll notice that your elbow, let's see here, your elbow is over your leg, not touching, but over your leg. Right? So you'll see that when you come up, and this is sort of like a hit, a strike, up. Stork stance or rooster stance, that's called. Remember, the horse stance. In the horse stance, you go into the L stance, where both feet are going that way, okay? And then from the L stance, you can go into the pro stance. Oop, this way. Pro stance. And the rooster stance is something like the empty stance, which we talked about, like when you're walking. And whatever leg that does or foot doesn't have weight on, it is empty. So, like with the empty stance, this leg is empty. Now this leg is full. Because I've got all my weight on this leg, this leg in the back is empty. Stepping forward, 
This leg now is full. And that goes into the weight shift thing that we talked about yesterday, about shifting your weight. And it's important for you to know about shifting your weight because if you know and understand how to do it, then you're less likely to fall. Because you don't want to fall. Right? You want to know what your body is doing. And I'd like you to practice that. I'd like you to practice the rooster stork stance and see how long you can hold it. I'd like you to talk, try to do the horse dance and see how long. Put your, put your watch on and see if you can hold the horse dance for five minutes or two minutes, just two minutes, okay? And, or the L stance for just two minutes or three minutes or five minutes or the bow stance. The bow stance also allows you to lunge, but you have to be careful about your lunging that you don't over, put your knee too far over your toes, okay? That's important. This is just a fixing moment, okay? Because you've been doing the Tai Chi for a couple weeks, I guess, but as you get better at it, then you want to pay attention to what can be done. And let me go further on paying attention. Like some instructors, or as they say, as you get better at doing the form, you don't make such wide steps. You don't want to step out so wide. You don't want to lean into it. You want to try to keep your body straight, almost like a soldier. Keep your body straight and go forward, making sure that you have your arms bent and you're relaxed. Your shoulders are down, you're relaxed. You turn your waist. See, so much to remember. So much to do. And one final thing I'd like you to practice, and besides two things I'd like you to practice, I'd like you to practice shaking a thousand illnesses from your body. Okay? I'm gonna do this over and over and over again. And say at least two minutes or a minute of doing shaking the illness from your body. Alright? Uh, don't don't hurt your arms in doing it. Go up as comfortable as you can do it in doing it. And one other balance thing I'd like you to try is your kicking. Okay? There's a heel kick. Heel kick with the heel, and then there's a toe kick with the toe. So what you want to do, if you can, get the lines like this on the ground. You want to breathe in, come up, and do a heel kick. Ooh. Okay? <laughs> awesome. Here we go. You want to breathe in, and when you go out with your leg, you can breathe out. So, coming in, and out, or toe kick, toe. And with the kicks, for the younger people, you want the kick to be about 45 degrees. You don't want it here, you want it here. You want it here, okay? So when you kick, you want the kick to be to the side. Alright, so again, come up, to the side, right? Oops, leaning too much, don't want to lean. We're done. Let's 
So, to the side. So, practice the heel kicks. That's with your heel. Practice the toe kicks. That's with your toe. Not that you kick too many people with your toes, but when you're doing the different forms, like there's a, we're doing the 24 Tai Chi Yen, there's a 48 form, and with the 48, you turn around and you do one, whoops, one toe kick, come down, you do a second toe kick, then you stop out and you do brush knee twist step. So, after you've done two heel kicks, then you would be doing two toe kicks. And while we're beginning to learn the 44 form, it's good to know that there are other kicks that you want to know so that you can advance and learn other forms eventually if you want to, right? Well, I think we've had enough. You should be doing 20 minutes of exercise every day if possible. You should be getting up and at least walking, walking all around or running or doing something to get up, make your body know it wants to stay in motion, right? You want to stay in motion because the body at motion tends to stay in motion. And a body at rest, woo, tends to stay at rest. And so I want you to know how great it is to be able to get up and go when you want to go. And if you keep staying at rest, then the body might say, I don't want to move, right? And you don't want the body to get like that because every day, in every way, I know you're getting better. So, if you like the YouTube channel, please subscribe. Hope you like my son Russell doing his roly moly motion. And I hope you like exercising because that's important for you, and you are important to me. Done now. Bye.